So let's move on to example two here. It says finding higher order derivatives, find g, and then there's three primes of one. So what that means is find the third derivative and then plug in one for g of x equal x to the fourth minus x cubed plus two x. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. To find the third derivative, we have to do one step at a time. So what would the first derivative be? Well, the derivative of x to the fourth, four x cubed. The derivative of negative x cubed is negative three x squared. The derivative of two x would be plus two times one, which is just two. Let's move on to the second derivative. The derivative of four x cubed would be four times three, which is 12 x squared. The derivative of negative three x squared would be negative three times two, which would be negative six x. Derivative of two is just zero, so we don't have to worry about that. We could finally find the third derivative. The third derivative, well, the derivative of 12 x squared would be 12 times two, which is 24 x, and then minus six times one, which is just a minus six. So now we just need to look at that at x equals one. So g triple prime, or the third derivative of g of x evaluated at one would be 24 times one minus six, which is, I'm getting 18. Please double check my math there, but that should be the third derivative evaluated at x equals one. Let's look at the next one here. It says find the fourth derivative of y equals x, or sorry, y equals one over x squared. So the way that I really want to look at it, instead of one over x squared, if you remember, we want to use the power rule. Isn't this the exact same thing as x to the negative two? So when I do this, let's find the first derivative. That would be y prime. And you notice I'm always writing the derivative number on the left. So like y prime, and then I'll put y double prime, et cetera. So you need to keep each of those lines denoted. You can't just put equal signs between all of these. The derivative of x to the negative two, drop the power, so it'd be negative two x to the negative three. Now, if this were a final answer, I couldn't have a negative exponent. I'd have to move the x cubed into the denominator, but I am not trying to find the first derivative, so I'm not gonna simplify until the very, very end. So what does that tell me? That tells me that the second derivative then would have to be negative two times negative three, which would be a positive six, x to the, well, negative three minus one would be negative four, just using my power rule and the constant multiple. I wanna go on, keep on going. Now I'm gonna be able to find the third derivative, y triple prime. Well, that'd be six times negative four, that's negative 24. Then it'd be x to the negative four minus one is negative five. Again, just using the power rule to find the derivative and the constant multiple rule. This is gonna give me the fourth derivative, or, or allow me to find the fourth derivative, I guess I should say. So now I need to do negative 24 times negative five negative 24 times negative five, isn't that a positive, please do that in your calculator, I'm getting a positive 120. And then that'd be x to the, well it's negative five minus one, that's negative six. But now since this is my final answer, I can't have negative exponents here. So that means I need to move x to the six into the denominator. Remember the 120 needs to stay in the numerator because it is not raised to the negative power only the x is raised to the negative power. So 120 in the numerator, x to the sixth in the denominator. Again, please make sure you're putting all your answers in the actual answer blanks. Let's look at this one right here. We're gonna have a lot more work to do on these problems, but that's okay, we could still do it. It says f of x equals x plus one over x minus three. And I wanna find the second derivative. I'm looking for the second derivative in each one of these problems. So what I'm gonna to have to do is use the quotient rule here because it is a fraction. We can't, it's not a single term on bottom, so I can't separate and simplify or anything like that. I guess if you really wanted, you can make it x minus three to the negative first power and use the product rule. Um, and you would actually have to use the chain rule as well, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna use the quotient rule. So if you remember f prime of x here, since you probably just recently did the quotient rule, f prime of x is gonna be low d high minus high d low over what's below squared. Rather than doing that low and high and D low and D high and on, on the left hand side there and plugging in it, I'm just gonna do it in line. If you like doing it off to the side like we've been doing the entire time, please I encourage you to do so, but I'm gonna do it in line. So what do I mean by that? Here's what I mean. What's the low? The low is X minus three. The derivative of high, well the derivative of high is the derivative of X plus one. The derivative of X plus one is simply one. Minus the high function, which is X plus one times the derivative of the low function, while well, the derivative of x minus three is simply one, 
all over the bottom squared. Remember, you do have to show work in this class every step to every problem. I am okay with you at this point in time, not when you first learn the quotient rule, but at, the, at this point in time, I am okay with you doing it in line like this where you don't have to show all that side work. However, again, the students who show that side work where they do the low, D low, high, D high, those students typically do better on the test because they make less errors, fewer errors, I should say. All right, so let's clean this up. Again, I'm still working with f prime of x here. x minus three times one would be x minus three. I'm gonna distribute the negative on the next one. So it's going to be a minus x and a minus one. This is all over x minus three quantity squared. I try to do my simplification. The x's are gonna cancel. Minus three minus one would be a negative four over, and then I have x minus three quantity squared. So this is my derivative function right there. That's the first derivative, but that's not what the problem wanted, is it? The problem wanted the second derivative. So how am I gonna do the second derivative? Well, what I want you to notice is that what I can do is, yeah, you're right, I can do the quotient rule again because this is a fraction, but if you remember the quotient rule section, we did an example just like this where we realized it's a constant on top. And if it's a constant on top, what a better way of writing this would be negative four times x minus three to the negative two. And then I could just use the general power rule, which would help me out, save me from having to do um, the quotient rule again. So that's how I'm gonna think about my function, my derivative function, instead of negative four over the x minus three quantity squared, I'm gonna think of it as negative four times x minus three quantity raised to the negative two. So now when I wanna find the second derivative, notice I'm writing f double prime of x. I can just do the general power rule, so I'd have the negative four, and then I'd drop the power, so that'd be negative two, keep the inside just the same, so that's x minus three, and then it's the power minus one, so that'd be a negative three, right? But then I need to remember to multiply times the derivative of the inside, so that's x minus three prime. Well, what's the derivative of x minus three? The derivative of x minus three is simply one. So let me clean all this up. I have a negative four times a negative two, which would be in times a one, which is a positive eight. And then the x minus three was raised to the negative three, so I'm gonna throw it into the bottom and make it x minus three quantity cubed. So there's my second derivative right there. Eight over x minus three quantity cubed. Okay, let's move on to the next example. Again, we're finding the second derivative. Here we're finding the second derivative of g of x equals three times the natural log of x plus two. So again, here we're using what's the chain rules, really what it's called. Um, we're gonna have to do g prime of x would be, well, we gotta keep that multiple out in front, so that's the three. The derivative of the natural log of x plus two is one over what's on the inside. So that'd be one over x plus two. But then remember, you have to multiply times the derivative of what's on the inside. And then you have to multiply times the natural log of the base, but the base is e here, so we don't have to worry about that. Since it's natural log, we don't have to worry about that. Well, what's the derivative of x plus two? Derivative of x plus two is simply one. Putting this together, I'd have that g prime of x is equal to, looks like I'd have three over x plus two. So what do I do now? Now I need to find the second derivative, but to find the second derivative, I might wanna think of this function as a little bit different. Again, this is just a constant on top, right? And anytime you have just a constant on top, when there's just a constant on top, you might wanna consider rewriting it as three times the quantity x plus two raised to the negative first power. Otherwise, I need to use the quotient rule. And I don't like using the quotient rule unless I absolutely have to. So finding the second derivative using that form, the three times x plus two to the negative one, I'm gonna use the general power rule. So that'd be three times, well then I drop the power, that'd be negative one. Keep the inside just the same, so that's x plus two, raised to the power minus one, so that's negative one minus one is negative two. But then I need to remember to multiply times the derivative of the inside. Never forget to multiply times the derivative of the inside, that's the most missed part of this on the test. The derivative of x plus two in this case is actually easy, it is just one. So let's clean it up. I have a three times a negative one, well that's a negative three. And then I have an x plus two raised to the negative two, so that throws it into the denominator and becomes x plus two quantity squared. 
So I'm ending up with my second derivative being negative 3 all over x plus 2 quantity squared.